All right, let's get started. So welcome, well, uh, welcome everybody. I am so pleased to have you here today to discuss uh, the Curve by Shoppable CTV partnership and the launch of the Shoppable CTV ads. So um, first I wanna welcome Marika. Uh, Marika, uh, thank you so much for being here with us. Do you mind starting by introducing yourself? Of course. Thank you so much, Heather, and thanks for having me. So my name is Marika Rock. I'm the Chief Operating Officer and Chief Innovation Officer at Curve Interactive or Curve.ai. Um, and we're a tech company that's headquartered out of Austin and New York. So I'm really excited to have this conversation with you today. Thank you. And before I forget, uh, I want to introduce myself as well. I'm Heather Udo. So I'm the founder and CEO of Shoppable and Shoppable is e-commerce e infrastructure that enables advertisers to create shoppable moments anywhere using our universal uh, e-commerce technology. So today we are here to talk about the newly launched closed loop Shoppable CTV ad solutions. And, you know, for anyone who, who hasn't, hasn't heard about the details yet, Shoppable TV is a revolutionary new way for advertisers to interact with shoppers that are watching TV. These new for formats deliver shop shopper engagement and direct sales revenue, as opposed to standard passive uh, commercial impressions. Now, before we get too far along, I do want to mention that we will be taking questions at the end. So if you have any questions, at any point in time um, while um, we are presenting and discussing, please feel free to submit them and then we will take them all at the end here. So just to, to kick things off, Marika, um, here's a question for both of us. Can you tell me about a time when you saw something on TV that you had wished had been shoppable? Yes, and I feel like everyone has this moment, but such a good icebreaker question. Um, so I have kind of a couple. Uh, so when I'm watching my uh, binge worthy kind of reality TV, I find myself really wishing that I could shop some of the great outfits. Um, think of like Bravo uh, shows or <laughs> The <course>. Bachelor, <laughs> you know, those sorts of shows. Uh, just kind of guilty pleasure, but super cute outfits. Um, but then on the other side, when I'm watching like, Home Improvement, um, mm -hmm. I find myself really wishing I could find a very particular unique lamp or, uh, you know, a unique couch, like something like that. Um, and in both instances, it's very, very difficult to, to shop those. I, uh, I'm really excited that to be part of kind of solving this problem. What about you? Oh my gosh. Um, so many, I would say probably the one that comes top of mind for me is sex in the city. I mean, all of the outfits, like, I mean, everything, fashion, beauty, um, interior design, there's so many um, scenes in there where I'm just like, oh my gosh, who, who made that and where can I find it? And, you know, even um, recently, and I cannot remember the name of the show, but I was watching something on Netflix and this woman had these beautiful pink sunglasses. And if you can't tell, I love pink. And I'd never seen sunglasses like that before. So I had to go and try to track them down. And, you know, 30 minutes later, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I w wish I could have just bought these instantly. And I would have, you know, right. so it, it's so frequent and um, so frustrating as shoppers, right? <laughs> right. I have a, yeah, I could keep on. Um, I, there was a, a show on Disney that I was, it was free form and then there was a super stylish woman and I actually found the vest that she had on oh, yeah. after maybe like a week and I did buy it. Um, I actually wore it to one of the upfronts earlier this year. Um, <laughs> but I like, it, it just shows that if you do, if you do make that path quicker and easier, people will make that purchase. Cause I even made it after days and days of searching for it. <laughs> exactly. It sticks in your head when that content is so good, it will stay with you. Right. Exactly. Great. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. So, sure. you know, we know uh, people have long been talking about the dream concept of shoppable TV. And, you know, I know people have been talking about this for decade, you know, decade plus, and now it's finally here. So what can you share about um, where this is happening and, and, and why now? 
Yeah, so that's a really good question. And it actually looks like somebody put, put that in the, in the Q&A as well. Um, so right now we are uh, launching this across several major streaming channels, um, really focusing on some of our more kind of, uh, I'm, I'm keeping it vague because we're going to make some really big announcements of who those publishers are, uh, probably closer to CES. Um, but they're very large broadcast companies who are launching this across streaming. Um, and it's really allowing us this really wonderful uh, period to kind of strive for standardization across these publishers. So we are working with more than one. Um, we also haven't focused in on the hardware, which we've also seen historically. Um, we're focusing in on our relationships with the content because of where Curve sits in the, in the chain. And one of the things we're kind of noticing with each of the conversations we're having across these very large publishers that you would know um, is that they're all looking at shoppable, a little bit shoppable TV, a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And so what we're really pushing them to do is, is standardize this because the, the consumer is actually going to be the same, you know, whether they're watching their show, like we just mentioned, you mentioned Netflix, I mentioned Disney, I mentioned mm -hmm. Bravo. So regardless if I'm watching on <clears throat> Disney or an NBC, um, I want that experience to be standard. So I want to kind of really begin to understand it. So that's what we're working on solving right now in partnership with Shoppable. Um, we're, we are starting, depending on what publisher, with uh, doing this in both ads and content. So processing content for matches, which I'll get into in a little bit, processing ads for the real-time correlation for shoppable moments. Um, so it really kind of depends, um, but we are uh, really focused on automating the identification of these key moments, automating the correlation of products that are in stock mm -hmm. with what's being seen on screen, and then partnering with shoppable uh, to help us with the transaction transaction part, part of the whole process. Because um, again, you, you, we want it to be standard and we want the consumer to start to get comfortable mm -hmm. with this while they know they want, we know they want to buy it. We know that there's a problem to solve there. So um, just to kind of start there until we show some visuals. Okay, that sounds that sounds great. And one quick question on the standardization, you know, um, obviously so important to, to consumers, as you mentioned. What about to advertisers? I assume there's benefits to advertisers to that as well. Absolutely. Um, the the I think that that's kind of the advertiser wants options, but they mm -hmm. also want to know what their limitations are. So one thing I really appreciate from well, it depends on who the advertiser is. But one thing I appreciate about the the advertiser side is that they they love the product the way that we're positioning it. So I can't wait to be able to speak to some of the betas that we're running with you guys right now. But we've positioned this to a CPG customer as well as a or advertiser as well as a makeup advertiser, and we were able to show them the exact same experience with the multi retailer selection and the way we're correlating it back to the TV. Mm. And they loved it. And they, we presented the exact same experience to both of them. And they both understood that if they both leaned in to the same experience in a standard way, that the end consumer will get more value than if they customized it. So I will tell you, they are uh, we are allowing our advertisers to customize things like uh, color palettes um, on their call to action buttons. Of course, their product mm -hmm. feeds are fully customized, like things that make sense. But otherwise, the experience itself should remain relatively standard so that the consumer starts to learn it. Imagine if like your Hulu or your Netflix looked super, super different from a UX perspective, you would it would be very, very difficult for uh, for you to kind of understand that across devices. So we're right. thinking about it the same the same way um, where we're trying to keep it standard while letting them have the customization that they would expect. But they actually uh, really understand the need for that standard and that the, the the attribution and the sales that come from that standardization are only going to go up as we keep it steady and consistent. Absolutely. Um, completely agree with that. So 
moving into kind of talking about our partnership a little bit more, um, this is something we've been working on for what, well over a year now. So we yeah. can finally start talking about it. Um, what makes Curve excited about the, the partnership together with Shoppable? Yeah, so that's a really great question. And I was trying not to jump ahead to this uh, earlier. So um, <laughs> so Curve has a couple patents and Shoppable has a couple patents and together they're perfectly, they perfectly fit together in my mind, almost like a cog perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, so Curve will identify any content. And one of our patents is the ability for us to process that content down to the pixel edge and correlate it to uh, product feeds and visually match it as well as establish this whole new set of metadata. What that means in English is that um, we can identify and automate uh, shoppable moments and using AI, we're able to visually match those um, as well as even create taxonomies visually, which is something that we're having to do for content. Um, so for example, if there is someone in my favorite reality show who has a deal with uh, you know, a certain brand uh, because you know she creates jackets, um, I can actually see her and eliminate jackets from her visual correlation. So we can do a lot of really intricate things that are going to help with that standardization. They're going to also help with making the content owners feel secure and automating shoppable TV. So again, Curb is creating all these moments. We're seeing the products with shoppable. We're able to actually streamline access to a lot of product feeds. So when we're seeing the products and the content, we're actually matching them against certain feeds depending on the content owner or what have you, but we're able to kind of uh, utilize Shoppable for that. We then take them to an experience that uh, Curve has organized using Shoppable's uh, product data and Curve's content data to, sh to, to showcase all of the most visually similar products from the experience they were seeing on the TV, on the mobile device. The experience can also be desktop or tablet, but of course it was uh, produced uh, mobile first. And in that experience, the consumer can add those products to a cart. And regardless of the retailer that they're available at, so if I want, I'm a lipstick person, if I want this lipstick, the visual matches in my cart, um, I can select whether I wanna buy that lipstick at uh, Target or at Walmart, what have you. And Shoppable's technology is able to show me all of the prices, shipping data, all that sort of thing in this one experience while finishing the transaction. So if you can kind of see where Curve starts and Shoppable uh, begins, and we, uh, we are really passing that uh, transaction to the Shoppable technology as well as that multi-retailer. Um, and Curve is really, really honing in on those moments, the precision of the objects level, mm -hmm. and then really the consumer's experience and connecting those dots to allow the shopping experience and the interaction experience to be very, very simple and easy for them so that it's an enjoyable experience that they want to keep doing over and over again. Yep, ab absolutely. And I mean, I think you said it, you, you said it um, really well that the two... The two technologies fit so well together at Shoppable. We have uh, almost about 450 million SKUs in that product catalog, yep. but not the capability to identify them, you know, in video like like Curve has. So it's just such a perfect, um, such a perfect match to to fit them together to be able to help uh, advertisers identify these products and um, and the publishers identify them from Curve side and then on Shoppable side to obviously make them shoppable at the end there. So, um, well, with, with, with that, why don't we jump in and, and kind of talk a little bit more about our, our partnership? Uh, Marika, can you tell us a little bit uh, more about how shoppable, the Curve by Shoppable connected TV or CTV ads are, are working? Absolutely. Would this be a good time to actually show the visual? Yeah, sounds great. Perfect. Perfect. Um, all right, so I'm just going to show a couple of visual slides. So for anyone who's on this, this is just for you to visualize what we've been talking about. Um, so uh, just confirming that you see the curve shoppable, Heather? I can, yes. We Perfect. Can see okay. All right, so uh, this is a bit of a visualization of uh, some of the words that I just said. So 
Uh, Curve has a platform that we're processing the content through. Uh, we call it Radius. Um, think about this as our AI brain. Um, so as we're processing the content, we're creating and automating a lot of different uh, either interactive experiences um, or that shoppable content, uh, the shoppable content experience that we're just talking about and correlating, utilizing the feeds from Shoppable. So here's an example of some of the feeds and I'm showing you Sam Edelman here. Um, and then uh, what I'll show you is just a front to back in the next slide, but where we'll kind of put punt over to Shoppable to complete the transaction. Um, we're setting everything up in radius and, and kind of allowing a few different formats to flow through. Um, so I'm just gonna show two more slides, that look, one that looks like this and one more that show you a couple different um, use cases. So this is a Revlon example. So this is the on-screen experience. Uh, this particular experience is an ad experience because I don't, I'm not able to show you the content um, here. It's uh, very, very uh, uh, protected on the legal front. So just note that in the case of uh, this was inside of a piece of uh, actual content, um, this would be very similar. I'm just not able to show that in a webinar. Um, so this is actually the ad. We're able to visually recognize with Curves technology exactly what product uh, this is. And in the entire ad, every product that's featured, we then correlate that to Shoppable's product feeds. Um, it does not, it can be one retailer or it can be multiple retailers. Um, for something like uh, Revlon, we'd recommend multiple retailers just so that they, you know, the consumer can make those choices. Um, what we then do is send the match data back to the front end. A lot of the content owners use an SDK, so we can send the API responses back to the SDK in real time so that the, the consumer's always seeing in stock matches um, from Shoppable's product feed, uh, but sent via Curves API uh, out to the consumer. Uh, this could also be delivered a few different ways. I won't get too tactical here, but the, the point is that this is updating in real time um, every single time the experience is called. Um, so secondly, this is a QR code. There's actually a few other ways to get the consumer into the content depending on the, uh, depending on the publisher. So if the publisher is uh, hooked into a login, we can actually send a push notification for them to interact. We also could do email, uh, URL, that sort of thing. But for ease of, of demo here, uh, the scan would go to an experience that looks like this. Again, uh, mobile designed, but cross device agnostic. This is where I was kind of mentioning, this is a standard experience, but you know, Revlon here could be replaced with L'Oreal and L'Oreal's colors, logo, that sort of thing. And then the exact products would be matched from what they saw in the content or in the ads right in this experience. So then um, this is a curb hosted experience. Every single product can, can uh, feature additional information. So a PDP would launch that would look something like this. And then every single product can be added to the cart right in this experience. Um, and you'll be able to see the retailer. And this is what is hosted by Shoppable. So Shoppable is showing the consumer, hey, this is available at Walmart. This is available at Target. Um, and it, you know, between all of the retailers, this retailer is going to give you the cheapest shipping. And all of that is happening inside of this experience. Um, and all the way through to the checkout. So again, I, I feel like that makes sense. So I'll move on. But again, just making it really easy to mm -hmm. solve that problem that um, we were talking about in the beginning, Heather, of our conversation. Yeah. And just if you would add to this flow from the shoppable perspective. Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, for the the full flow, flow, I think one thing to, to add to is just that how you know, creating this type of um, ad experience is, it really takes that ad from something that is really passive to something that is useful to, to the consumer too. You know, how many times do you, you know, do you see ads where you actually want to use the products or in this case with beauty, 
Um, there's so many different beauty looks and it can be hard to identify what are all of the products that, 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 that were used within this ad. And this makes it so helpful for, for the consumers to, uh, to figure out what are those products, shop them, and then kind of keep, you know, it's really an extension to the ad itself where it keeps living on after, you know, those 30 seconds. So um, just want to call that out too, because I think that's an important, important part as well. That's a really, really good point. Um, and kind of just speaking to, uh, we're, we're having to crawl, walk, run this as we work through legal uh, on the content side and also the capabilities that the infrastructures have. Um, it, it, uh, it's, it's kind of an interesting um, journey we're on and, and that we feel like we're truly leading, which is really exciting. Um, I got go into that point because I do want you to notice that each of these is brand specific. So Sam Edelman is a brand here and on the previous it was Revlon. Um, so in the future, the goal would be that we could actually feature multiple brands in the same experience um, where the content is really the feature. So I will mention that and the exact mm -hmm. experience would still be standard where the multiple retail shop option would be uh, would be an option. Um, but here you'll see that the same capabilities are available for clothing. I mentioned this versus um, versus the previous because uh, these are both great use cases for mm -hmm. what the consumer actually wants. And uh, Curve is managing all of the variants inside of this uh, this secondary screen here. So sizes and colors for any UX people out there. Uh, mm -hmm. are something that we'll manage right in this experience so that by the time the shoppable cart is an option uh, for the consumer to utilize to then check out, uh, those variants are uh, represented in this experience. So again, just speaking to a couple of things here where we're managing the variant management, making the shopping and cart experience standard and allowing the transaction right inside of this experience and in the future, uh, being able to mesh, you know, multiple brands. Um, we have a ton of, of interest in this product from direct retailers as well. Um, mm -hmm. So that's been really interesting also. Um, so it's just really, really interesting to kind of see the different iterations of something uh, that's coming to life in a very standard way. Great. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for, for walking through those. Of course, of course. It always and helps to um, bring it to life. Go ahead. <laughs> I said it, it always helps to bring it to life where people can can see the the visuals of, of, of what it looks like. Exactly. So I'm hoping that was helpful, but we can continue, of course, to, to keep talking through it. Um, but uh, to your point, at least people can kind of see where we're at today. But um, every publisher really does have a different iteration of how they want this to flow. So my hopes and dreams are that we can really help them standardize it uh, using uh, both the curve and shoppable technologies to to help them get there. Yeah, ab absolutely. It's certainly certainly gonna gonna help from the the consumer standpoint. So from my perspective, Heather, I'm I'm always talking a lot about. And everyone here has probably already heard this. We're all about precision and matching with the content. That is what our shtick is. It's a huge problem for the for the publishers and the advertisers when they start to think of shoppable TV. Um, I don't speak to that instant shopper gratification like mm -hmm. you do. So uh, maybe you can elaborate on how shoppable's technology fits in and provides that instant shopper gratification while I continue to speak to the, <laughs> to the content matching. Yeah, absolutely. So at Shoppable, you know, is really founded on the concept that there are all these really kind of wasted opportunities where um, amazing content is not shoppable. And if if a great piece of content of, of any type is not shoppable, uh, what I realized before I started this company and what led me to start it is that everybody's losing, you know, the, the advertiser, the brand, uh, whoever the publisher is and the consumer, no one is getting what they would want from it. But when you can, can really create these great standard shoppable experiences, 
it creates these, you know, this ability to shop at the point of inspiration. And as we say frequently, we like to bring the cart to the consumer so that we're removing all of that friction and we're trying to to move away from as many of these wasted opportunities as we can because that friction is resulting in lost sales for everybody. And ultimately by adding in this uh, this shopping uh shopping technology, this universal checkout, it removes many points of friction from that shopping experience and just makes it a lot easier for consumers to purchase. So, and, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I think that, you know, with, with this uh, partnership together, we're seeing so many advertisers interested in it because it does really tie together that missing element from our TV, something that we've been staring all staring at for decades and it has our attention. But how do you know, how do you take that attention and translate it to sales? How do you take that attention and translate it um, into engagement and beyond that, those those 30 seconds? And and how do you make it, as I mentioned earlier, how do you make it helpful for, for consumers so that um, they're not just, you know, watching the commercials, they can easily find those products products and purchase it and have it shipped to their door. So what we're, you know, what it's really doing is by uh, enabling this technology, we like to say that it's really a buy buy now technology as opposed to where to buy. You know, I um, not I won't call out any specific names, but sometimes you'll still see commercials where at the end of it, it'll say available at these, you know, fine retailers. And that's great. It's a little helpful, but we can do so much better than that, you know, with how technology is today. So that's really what what we're doing with Shoppable's technology is instead of um, just telling people, oh, it's available here. No, no, no. Buy it now and we'll bring the products to you. We'll ship it to your door. Let's not make the consumers do the work to try to hunt down the products anymore. Let's just make it available to them now. So that's really where where Shoppable comes comes into place. That's a really good point. And uh, one thing I I'll add as a consumer in this is, um, I if I'm putting a mascara in my cart and a lipstick in my cart, and I want both of them, and one is at Walmart and one one is at Target, I love that I can complete that transaction one time. Uh, with your technology, which I think is another huge value um, in in the way that we're building this together is we're really building it with that consumer first and uh, trying to eliminate those barriers to the transaction that we talked about in the, in the very beginning of the, yeah. the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. Anytime, you know, and, and, you know, every, you know, most people know this, but every single time you force a consumer to click or you force them to go and try to track down a product, the conversion is just going lower and lower and lower and lower. And, you know, this is about bringing, um, bringing that, that cart back to the consumer and removing those points of friction. So it's really just seamless for, for, for those consumers. 100%. So why is, you know, again, we've been talking about CTV and, um, you know, shoppers have been asking for shoppable TV for a very long time, but why now, why do you think now is the right time? And, and why do you think we're seeing the, seeing the traction across the board on the publishing side and the advertising side now? Yeah, that's a great question. So I feel like, I mean, Curve, I've been at Curve myself for six years. Uh, so we have been working on this and the time really is now. The digital infrastructure hasn't had, you know, it wasn't in place when we even first started in terms of where it is today as well. Um, so it's it's interesting that even in just a six year span, how much how much progress we've made. And I, you know, talked to our CEO, Gary Mittman about this all the time around like, this is our time, we are here. Um, so what we dreamed about when we first joined, you know, Curve, we're actually activating on, we will make content shoppable in 2023, which is amazing, like I can say that. Um, but to your actual question, um, that the time is now because of those digital infrastructures, a lot of those were expedited during those years of COVID. But I'm thinking things like digital payment methods, mm -hmm. uh, the e-commerce infrastructures, uh, social commerce, getting that consumer 
you know, used to shopping in this new way, helping them, you know, along the way, even into the internet infrastructure and AI. I know mm -hmm. AI, everyone says it, and it's almost like a bad word now, but we would not be able to match all of those SKUs that you mentioned to long pieces of content without the use of AI inside of our technology. Um, not at a, you know, a hundred person company, you'd have to be thousands and thousands of people. So um, okay. the time yeah. is now from my perspective, because of technologies like ours, but also the other technologies that really create those digital infrastructures that allow the, all of these things to, to work together for today. So now our combined technology, the, you know, the AI, the digital, you know, digital payment methods, like all of these things bring it to now where this year in 2023, these things are happening. And I cannot wait to see what 2024 allows because at this point, technology is ready. And I'm just going to soapbox for one second that it is the legal teams that are in the way on the content side. <laughs> so right now the time is, is, is here digitally infrastructurally and the consumers want it. So at this point, like you said a moment ago, these publishers are missing monetizable opportunities where consumers want to make purchases. And now we have the infrastructure to make that happen at scale. Absolutely. I'm passionate about that because everyone <laughs> has that moment. Everyone yeah, has oh, for sure. buy those, those uh, glasses. Yeah, everyone has that. Yeah, for sure. Well, speaking of AI, can you elaborate a little bit? I mean, first of all, I can't, as you were saying, saying that a moment ago, I, I cannot imagine this working without AI and yeah. manually looking up and tagging every single product, like sounds like a nightmare. So AI is such an important part of, of, of your technology. Can you elaborate a bit on that and your you know, how your proprietary AI identifies these moments of inspiration? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I'll try to keep it high level. Uh, you probably noticed by now I'm not super great at doing that, but I will do my best. <laughs> so uh, Curve ingests everything into that Radius platform. And that is where our AI really takes, uh, takes hold of the content. Um, so from the beginning, from 2017 um, in our inception, uh, we started to hierarchically organize video into clusters of uh, clusters of the actual scenes um, or frames, if you will. And we then uh, inside of those frames, we uh, assign objects. I only go all the way back to the hierarchy because if we wouldn't have done that back then, to your point, it would have been just too much. So we've foundationally created this wonderful hierarchy that we have taken from our ad products into our metadata and AI products. So it allows us to take hour long episodes and tangibilize them into uh, those kind of scenes and objects. So then the first thing we'll do is say, okay, in this scene, uh, I'm sorry, in this uh, piece of content, these are the breaks that will exist. So in this break, every single content owner views it this way. And this, in this piece of content leading to the break, these are the categories of objects that we would recommend make shoppable. In the second break, in the third break, um, what have you, they're basically the, the, the slots of content between the pods. Um, so we have all of this uh, algorithmically happening in Radius where we have this, this uh, engine that's generating these trend analysis so we on, almost can break down the piece of content into uh, into like avails, you know, like, hey, these are the avails from a content monetization perspective. So it's you, there's no way to kind of do that without AI, but infrastructurally we are telling the AI, hey, these are the things that we want to do. So then instead of looking at the full piece of content, which of course we also can do, we also could focus in on areas when we're doing the match of millions and millions of SKUs, we could actually say in this area match these this category of SKUs, in this area match this category of SKUs. So we're using AI to do things like that. Um, so it is a lot of kind of variant modeling inside of this, uh, but we are using large language models to, um, to really amplify 
the breadth of what we can do, um, how quickly we can do it, um, which is very, very quick. Um, all, all of the content owners we work with always will say things like, I know Curve, you can go fast, but I can't work as fast <laughs> as you uh, through their kind of hierarchy of, of you know, their, their, you know, you know how it is over at the pub side. But um, so, you know, I could kind of answer this question for a long time, but I think at a high level, that's the best way to kind of think about it is that mm -hmm. because we've been talking to these same publishers and we've had these partnerships for six years, we really honed in the methodology of what to tell the AI to do that would allow the most efficient and effective matches that also won't waste resources. It won't waste you know, like it, it, we're really maximizing in and trimming off the fat in terms of what we choose to analyze as well because of the way that we've done it. I mean, we've analyzed millions of pieces of content by today, which is, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot, millions of pieces of content. Yeah, I remember uh, Gary, your, your CEO mentioning to, to me, I don't know if it's public, how, how many, the exact number um, that you guys have analyzed, but I was like, blown away by by how much you guys have done. It's really, really incredible. Well, thank you. Yeah, we're proud of it. It's kind of like your big number on the SKU side. That's a that's something <laughs> I like to say uh, because I really like people to realize that this is a true technology where it, you know, it really can fully automate. Um, although the publishers are still requiring approval steps today, um, our goal would be that we push for more standardization and more automation along the way to really get the consumer to those shoppable moments. Right. That's how we get it to scale, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, so well, I'll, I'll, I'll pass it to you, Heather. <laughs> yeah. So I know we're coming up on, on time here. Yep. Um, but so let me just check. I think, um, we have, um, I think we have a couple of questions submitted. So let me just, why don't we just jump to the Q and A because I know right. we only have about uh, two minutes left here. Um, and while while we're doing that, one more question for you, Marika. Since mm -hmm. the holiday season is is fast approaching right now, how can advertisers take advantage of these new interactive ads uh, this holiday season? Is it too late, or is there still an opportunity now? There's still an opportunity today. Um, if you could reach out to me, I'll get you in contact with the right people on the publisher side um, to get that done. I'd say we have maybe just a few more weeks, maybe two or three more weeks if you want to get in on this holiday season. Um, and this would be, you know, utilizing what I showed you where um, Curves, uh, uh, Curves uh, powering the front end and then Shoppables powering the transaction. So really great question. Um, I'll pop our, our emails up in a moment at the end, but there is still, this is a perfectly timed webinar because there's still a few a few weeks where we could actually get this in because it's such a streamlined experience because uh, of the great work we've done with Shoppable as well as our publisher partners. They've really, they've really been wonderful to work with so far. Right. And on along those lines, how what's the level of lift for an advertiser that that would want to uh, to try this out this holiday season? Yeah, I'd say for the most turnkey product that we have, uh, all they'd have to do is is, uh, you know, do a buy with a particular publisher. And all we need from a, a curve and publisher perspective are things like their video asset. Um, a few different parameters like fonts, that sort of thing to build the front end. Um, and we can have this done very, very quickly. So you would be live at this point, you could get something live by November. Um, and these are with the very large publishers. So that's a, a big deal. Um, of course, Kirk can, Kirk can move fast, but that's within the SLAs that they've established. So I think video asset, uh, clarification on what retailers are primary retailers for us to set up in the shoppable uh, transaction side. Curve can do all the association of the SKUs automatically. So it's actually a very low lift experience um, if, you're, if, the, if your goal is to really lean in and uh, into commerce uh, this holiday season. Great. And we're, you know, we're 
we're recording this here today, the first week of October. So we are officially in Q4. Holiday season is kicking off. Um, so super excited, uh, you know, that advertisers still have a little bit of time to uh, to get in for the holiday season and um, and, and try out the, the, the new shoppable CTV ads together. So uh, just a couple other quick questions here that, that came in. I know we're almost at time, but um, Marika, for you, um, does Curve and Shoppable technology work across all TV publishers? Are there distribution limitations to the technology? So like I was mentioning in the in the beginning here, um, and we can kind of take this offline, but uh, we do work with most publishers today. Uh, every single publisher uh, looks at everything a little bit differently. So we're not as standard as we'd like to be. But you can you can activate this across uh, several publishers. I would just have to let you know exactly what you know when you go to this publisher. This is what you ask for there. This publisher calls it this here, um, and that is one of my big goals for twenty twenty four is get them <laughs> to standardize that. But um, you can work across uh, multiple publishers, and it is currently a CTV experience. This isn't something that we've tested on the broadcast side just yet definitely on the list for, uh, for 2024, but, uh, we're focusing on the digital, uh, the digital streaming right now. Great. And I assume if a publisher, another publisher wanted to work with you guys, there wouldn't be any limitation to that. No, not at all. Yeah. You can reach out to us as a brand an agency or a publisher, and we have different workflows that work, you know, different work streams that we'd send y'all through. Um, but we're, we are trying to be agnostic in this chain, um, and kind of serve our advertisers, our publishers, um, you know, with our technology within the, the infrastructure that exists. So uh, great question, Heather. Great. Um, and what products, got another question submitted here. What products do you think will do especially well within shoppable CTV advertising? So this is a tricky question because uh, we're noticing that uh, this is very dependent on the consumer. But to answer you and Heather, I'm sure you have a very specific answer on this too. But from the curve per, per, curve perspective, um, think about things that a consumer would quickly shop. So things that are not over a certain price point. So think things that are closer to under a hundred dollars, depending on the household income is really uh, a really good place. So thinking of makeup, like we talked about with Revlon, mm -hmm. um, even those shoes we were showing, um, the Sam Edelman shoes, those are not a super high price point shoe. So thinking about something that you could really make that impulse purchase on and still feel really comfortable with uh, is one place I would start. Um, if, if the product needs a higher frequency, uh, the, the purchase can still be added you know, it's still add value, but the consumer is probably going to spend more time with it versus buying it in that moment. Um, but back to kind of where Heather and I started, uh, a lot of times clothing is more expensive, but if the match is super precise, mm -hmm. I will say that very, very precise or exact match products for the retail side are going to be really impactful for the consumer who's buying for themselves. I know we're over time, so I can keep going, but that's where like Heather, I don't know if you'd add anything there because it's very dependent. Yeah, I think it, it's true. I think it's dependent upon a, a number of different things, but, but for sure, I think you kind of hit it on, you know, um, things that are impulse buys or um, unique or things that are those exact, those exact matches, home decor, apparel and accessories, um, health and beauty, uh, you know, everything along those lines. And then another thing that that we've seen too is like special offers where there's a limited time offer for when you've seen, you know, when you've seen that, that also uh, does does very well too. So I would say along along those lines. Great. Well, um, thank you so much, Marika, for for being here and discussing this. And thank you to, to the audience for joining us and um, participating in, in the discussion today. Um, it has been such a pleasure talking to you and having you here. And again, uh, you know, I can say on behalf of the whole Shoppable team, we are just so excited to work with you guys and bring, you know, bring this to market uh, this year, 2023. Um, it's here. Thank you so much, Heather. And thank you all for being here. We're excited. Look out for Shoppable and Curve uh, and, and uh, in this holiday season, but also into 2024. 
um, we're going to move some mountains. So thank you so much, Heather. And I'm excited to, to extend and work with, uh, with you guys who are listening. Us as well. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.